I really need to make this video talking about belief and how easy lucid dreaming and really anything that you want to experience can really be. Why am I making this video? By the way, if you're hearing random noises, it's my rats playing in the background. Why am I making this video? Because you would be amazed if you saw how many messages, emails and comments I get from people saying, essentially, I was so, I, f I was finding lucid dreaming so difficult, so hard before I found your channel. I found your channel and then you told me how easy it is and almost instantly things shifted, things changed and I was able to do these things. You know, the, there's a comment here, it's got dozens of upvotes on one of my videos. It says, you saying lucid dreaming is easy after everything else telling me it's hard has inspired me to go back to learning how. There's so many comments like this where people basically say that I inspired them and helped them to lucid dream after years of not being able to do it. And this is the power of belief and I want to explain in a few ways why this is so powerful. So what's happening now in the world is essentially a big change and people as a whole, collective consciousness, is realising that, hold on a second, we've been lied to about quite a lot of things and we actually can do almost anything, you know? We have this immense power within us to completely heal and reorder and reorganise our bodies and minds with our consciousness alone. And in fact, there is no different. I've heard recently <laughs> this quite funny statement that said, that our, body, our minds are unable to heal our bodies or that there's this separate connection. But if you really look at the quantum level and if you read the hundreds of books that I have here below me, um, you will understand that there is no difference between physical matter, our body, our cells, whatever, and consciousness. In fact, consciousness creates and is the physical matter that we think is outside of us. And it's very clear that anyone saying otherwise has not looked into the quantum mechanics and the quantum uh, experiments that have been done now and are continuing to be done that show there's no separation. Consciousness is matter. Matter is consciousness. There's no difference between the two things. So when you, um, you know, when you think about questions like, can you heal yourself in a lucid dream? Yeah, of course you can. You know, can the, can the mind heal the body? Yes, of course it can. It doesn't happen any other way. It really doesn't. And anyway, healing is not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is that lucid dreaming is easy. And I want you to just repeat this and maybe go down and type it in the comments as well that lucid dreaming is easy. Because when you, and really this applies to anything, but when you have this uh, belief that something is easy, it becomes easy. When you have a belief that something is difficult, it becomes difficult, okay? And you know, this is not just, me kind of preaching at you. This is something that I've heard myself from so many people, countless people, um, books, videos, interviews, really anything. And if you look at the interviews with, let's say, top level athletes, celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, really anyone that you could consider to be successful, people you could, you would say are, let's say, self-made or successful, uh, high achievers, if you actually listen to the words they say, the interviews they give people, almost all of them attribute their success to the power of consciousness, the power of the mind to set an intention, to visualize it, and then to manifest it. And this is across the board. You know, it's very, it's very hard to find somebody who's at the pinnacle of success who doesn't attribute it to the power of belief, the power of manifestation, conscious intention, and belief. Now, of course, hard work is important too, but that comes secondary to the belief, the intention and the manifestation. This applies just the same to lucid dreaming. You can try any technique you want. You can try any supplement, any device. None of it's going to work unless you believe it's possible. In fact, the whole kind of point of you typing into YouTube how to learn how to lucid dream is by definition in order to type that, you must believe it's possible. You must have heard somebody else do it, thought it sounded like a cool idea, and then you subconsciously or consciously decided, oh, that sounds like a, an interesting experience. I want to do that. So it must be possible. So I want to learn how to do it. And therefore you type into YouTube, how to lose a dream. The belief comes first, the techniques and the actions come second. And in many cases, the belief alone is enough. This applies not just to lucid dreaming, but also to uh, healing, manifestation, and really anything that you're trying to do, belief, intention, and uh, conscious awareness come way before anything else. There are a series of experiments that have been done as well, which really show the power of conscious awareness and intention. 
you have the experiment where they basically took somebody's DNA f separated from the guy by about 200 miles and they simulated the emotions of this, of this guy and instantly the DNA that they separated from him, bear in mind this DNA was 200 miles away from the guy, uh, instantly responded electrically to the guy's emotions. Now, there's no explanation for that according to traditional physics. So when you hear people say things like, you know, even the organs inside your body, the, the cells that make up your body are completely separate to your mind, it, it, <laughs> there's, I have no words. Like, that is so far from logic, reasoning, and reality that it's funny. How is there any separation between your consciousness and your body? You know, there is none. And of course, this is how you have these, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of stories of people who were and did heal their bodies with intention, with belief. You know, this, and this happens across the board, way, way beyond the um, margin for error that you could attribute to things like um, deviation from the mean, nocebo effect, uh, errors in reporting, all of these things. These are such a tiny, tiny fraction of the explanation. They don't explain, you know, how people are able to uh, miraculously make tumours vanish, right? Or how people are able to have a terminal diagnosis from a doctor and then weeks or days later, the thing is gone and the doctors just have no idea what's happened. You know, these things are happening more and more and more. Now, you might be asking, well, why don't they happen all the time? Exactly the same reason. Because you have people saying that it's not possible. Because you have the whole society, the whole medical industry, which, bear in mind, only makes money. And I want to repeat this. Only makes money when you're sick. Okay? So why on earth would there... If there was a way, if there was a natural way, which there is, to heal anything, they'll be the last people to tell you. <laughs> the doctor doesn't have an income unless you're sick. So hopefully you understand that. Anyway, um, yeah, the margin for error is very, very, very uh, small. It's a very small piece of the explanation for the fact that we, our consciousness controls our body. And I want to just make it very clear because this goes back to the absolute foundation of really everything. Your consciousness is not your mind. And this has been proven scientifically as well. If you, you know, if you really um, only want to listen to science lab-based evidence, this has been proven in labs as well. You can take somebody, and this happens very often with uh, brain damage victims, people who have had damage or trauma to their brain. They used to think that each part of the brain had a correlation to a specific trait or function within our body. They used to think that, right? They used to think if you remove, let's say, this tiny chunk here, you would no longer be able to speak French. If you remove this chunk, your left leg won't work, for example, right? They used to think this. However, this has never been proven, and now it's been proven that actually you can take out, you know, a potentially huge chunk of your brain, and the whole thing still works exactly the same. They used to think memories as well were mapped to a specific area physically of your brain. They used to think, for example, here is a memory of this, and then two centimetres over here, that's an another memory. This as well has been disproven, because you have these people who have had chunks of their brain mo removed, or, you know, uh, in an accident, whatever, they still have all their memories, and there's really no explanation for that other than the ancient and now modern explanation that it's a hologram, that every piece of the image reflects the whole. So it doesn't matter if you take out a piece of the image, because it's redundant. You know, if you take away a piece of your, let's say, of your brain, the whole thing still works because it's a hologram. So in terms of consciousness, right, uh, your awareness, and you can prove this again with meditation, if you meditate and just bring your con your awareness back to kind of like almost above your body, physically like outside of your body, what you'll notice is that your thoughts are very separate to the awareness of the thoughts. Vast majority of people never notice this because they never meditate and they're constantly locked into their ego and into their mind. Very left-brained, these are the sorts of people who, who will be very uh, attracted to things like numbers, logic, reason, um, left-brained kind of black and white stuff, as opposed to the right-brained creative flow state kind of stuff. 
The best situation is where you synchronize the two through the corpus callosum, which is the bridge between the two hemispheres of the brain, and you merge into one, it, the, you merge the two kind of approaches into one. So like I was saying, you, through meditation, you bring your awareness out and you realize that actually these thoughts that your mind is having, they're not you. Okay, they're, they're you know, very separate to your consciousness, which is outside of you. There's really no, there's no way you can point to and say, this is where my consciousness starts and this is where my consciousness ends. Because your consciousness is everywhere. You are, everything that exists is consciousness. Um, but if you want to kind of, I guess, prove this to yourself, try and meditate. And what you'll notice if you do it properly is that your consciousness is kind of very separate to your thoughts. Your thoughts are, are created in your brain, in your mind. And these are based on things like subconscious programming, beliefs, memories, um, the ego, all of this stuff, right? These, it's kind of like this monkey chatter that just goes on and on. When you meditate, you separate from that and you have this awareness of the thoughts, but you are not the thoughts. So the seat of consciousness is not your brain, it's not your mind, and it's certainly not these little thoughts that you keep having or that your ego keeps having. So when you come at it from that approach, your consciousness is essentially uh, operating your body and mind like an avatar, okay? So through the consciousness, you can then direct the mind and then affect the body. Anyway, I don't really know what the title of this video is gonna be because it's covering quite a few things. I might just make it something like lucid dreaming is easy or anything is possible. Hopefully you get the idea. I, I, you know, I could talk for a long time about this stuff, but I just wanted to share my opinion on, my opinion on uh, healing specifically and lucid and the, the ability of consciousness and the mind to affect the body. This has been proven many times. And if I have some time this week, I might actually collect a list of all of the, I have a list of a smaller list of the studies, but I will collect a larger list of all the studies uh, experiences, situations, people, and things that prove this. Anyway, the biggest proof, by the way, is just to try it for yourself and like really give it a good go for 30 days. Anyway, let me know what you think.